We've finally made it. If you've been following the channel the past few weeks, you know that I've been doing a recap of the current state of the meta in Destiny 2. I went over every single subclass, discussed their pros and cons, and gave a rating as well as overall recommendations for playing the subclass. Today, we have one last subclass to talk about. Although we still have about a week to go until we get our hands on it, I thought it would be interesting to look into the future and see what the state of the subclass will be as we explore the final shape. Today, we'll be talking about Prismatic, in PvE, PvP, and on each individual class, Hunter, Warlock, and Titan. Hey everyone, I'm Rizeki, and welcome to my analysis of the future of the Prismatic subclass in Destiny 2. As always, thanks so much for checking out the video. About 90% of my viewers have yet to subscribe to the channel, so if you like my content, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like on the video. I've got a bunch of things planned for the final shape, and you won't want to miss any of it. But, with all my YouTuber plugging out of the way, let's get to what everyone wants to talk about. Prismatic. Prismatic is of course the newest subclass that we are getting alongside the release of the final shape. Prismatic is special in that it isn't so much a new subclass, as much as a combination of every other subclass we already have access to. You can combine abilities from any subclass to create unique, never before seen synergies and gameplay loops. There are limitations though. Bungie has handpicked a subset of abilities found on each subclass to be used with Prismatic. This means that some absolutely broken combinations probably won't be possible, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the subclass is dead on arrival. We'll talk more about the abilities when we go over each class individually, of course. In addition to this, using Prismatic also allows you to use the new exotic class items. These class items will have two randomly rolled exotic perks from existing exotic armor some of which can be from other classes that you're not playing as. For example, a hunter can use Syntheseps, a Titan can use Assassin's Cowl. The actual exotic perk is a bit more watered down when compared to the original exotic, but the core effect is still there. So something like Spirit of the Assassin will make you invisible on powered melee kills, but not provide additional healing like the original Assassin's Cowl. There are a lot of combinations of perks you could find on these class items, but notably they are only usable with Prismatic. And just like the abilities on each subclass, they have a limited pool of perks to choose from instead of every exotic in the game. To loop back to Prismatic itself, it appears that a lot of the interesting gameplay it will create relies on the interaction between different subclass verbs and keywords. For example, I mentioned it briefly in my Stasis update video, but Frost Armor plus Woven Mail might have the capability to provide nearly 70% DR if played correctly. Now, some of the interactions I talk about today, like this one, might not work exactly as I expect. Uh, for DR, there might be some form of diminishing returns as you stack different sources, but the possibility of the combination being busted is of course there. Devour and Restoration, Scorch and Slow, Ignitions and Shatter. There's more than just these, and every combination will lead to unique gameplay and on top of everything, tons of different build paths. Prismatic also has a new mechanic called Transcendence. All classes have the same behavior while transcendent, so I felt that I didn't need to include it when I talk about each class individually. After dealing enough light and darkness damage to fill a meter under your super, you could activate Transcendence for a handful of powerful benefits. Greatly increase your grenade and melee regen, increase your weapon damage, decrease your received damage, and transform your grenade into a special light and dark combination grenade specific to your class. Hunters get Hailfire Spike, Warlocks get Freezing Singularity, and Titans get Electrified Snare. I'm going to guess that being transcendent will be a pretty tempting thing to do while playing Prismatic, since it has a ton of amazing benefits. A con that I noticed about Prismatic has to do with the abilities that were actually selected to be part of the subclass. The vast majority of abilities are lesser used aspects, grenades, and or melees. For example, Hunters will have access to Gunpowder Gamble and Winter Shroud, and Titans get Drenger's Lash. There are even weird grenade choices, like Warlocks receiving Storm Grenades, which is very rarely used on Warlocks to begin with. I think by including these abilities, Bungie is trying to bring lesser used options back into the limelight. However, this runs the risk of Prismatic feeling underpowered when compared to the mono subclass alternatives available. Again, that's all a hypothetical. Let's start taking a look into how each class might measure up when using Prismatic, and how I think they might fit into the overall meta of the final shape. And as a heads up, obviously Prismatic is not available at the time of me making this video, so the gameplay footage in the background is not going to be of me playing with Prismatic. I tried my best to get footage that is similar to what I'm talking about instead. Hey. Uh, Editor Rizeki here, I specifically left out fragments in this video since we didn't know all of them. A number of YouTubers though with pre-release footage of Prismatic showed off every fragment coming to Prismatic at launch right after I finished the script. 
I'll be doing a short video going over all of them tomorrow in a similar format to my stasis update video. Everything I say in this video still applies, and I'll talk more about how the fragments interact with each class in the fragment video, so check that out when I upload it. Anyway, let's get to talking about the individual classes. As usual, I'm going to start with Hunter. Prismatic Hunter is most likely going to have two notable build options at launch, a purely offensive build and an agile but highly resilient build. Now, there are obviously more than these, but I think the two I picked out give a nice comprehensive preview of Prismatic on Hunter. The first build path I notice when looking at the available options for Hunter is the souped up Arc Strider. As mentioned in my Arc video, one of the most evergreen Hunter builds is the Assassin's Cowl or Liar's Handshake Hunter, making use of the combination blow gambler's dodge combo for infinite powered melees. Luckily, Prismatic Hunter also has access to this, but with some bonus additions that make it much stronger. For one, we no longer need to rely on Assassin's Cowl for invisibility. We can now use the Stylish Executioner aspect from Void to accomplish the same thing. Stylish has also been updated to proc on any subclass debuff, not just Void debuffs. The jolt we apply from our punch will trigger this, right? Well, actually no, we don't have our lethal current aspect here. So it's not so simple. We have some other options though. We could take Spirit of Caliban on our exotic class item to ignite enemies on powered melee blows. This should also trigger the invisibility from Stylish Executioner. Alternatively, we could use Winter Shroud to apply slow to enemies before using Combination Blow. Some other options for this type of build may include our Threaded Spectre aspect to create a ton of clones while doing our combo. Now, I'm going to put a big asterisk on this because Radiant Dance Machines didn't allow for this to happen but it's possible infinite threaded specters will still be possible in the final shape since the combination blow dodge refund is not a special dodge like it is on RDMs. Also, the new balance of power exotic could actually make this insane, giving you access to infinite empowered threaded specters instead, but we'll see how that performs when we get our hands on it. And of course, you can make use of any exotic that interacts with our melee combo like Assassin's Cowl or Liar's Handshake. There are also a number of various exotic class item perks besides Caliban that could be useful too. Spirit of the Assassin, Syntheseps, Jerfalcon, Votracer, Liar, and Wormhusk can all be included in the build depending on how you want to play. Wormhusk will provide bonus healing like the original Assassin's Cowl build, while something like Syntheseps will increase your damage output instead. The other path I see for Prismatic Hunter is a defensive build, focusing on acquiring as much damage resistance as possible while still being agile and moving quickly around the map. After reviewing the recent changes to Stasis and the addition of Frost Armor, something big occurred to me. On Prismatic, it will be easy to not only gain Frost Armor by using Stasis abilities, but you could also easily gain Woven Mail by either using Serdarachne's Facade or the Spirit of Serdarachne on your class item. I'm a bit iffy on the Spirit of Renewal, as it seems to not include the Frost Armor changes that the full Renewal Grasp exotic does, but it could have just been omitted since the class item article was released before we got the Stasis article. If it does work like the full exotic, Spirit of Serdarachne and Spirit of Renewal will be by far one of the easiest methods of obtaining both Frost Armor and Woven Mail, which could result in somewhere around a 70% damage resist at the top, which is kind of insane. Moving on from some build options, there is a lot of dead weight in this subclass. Our supers are mostly not great. Golden Gun will be the only DPS super we have, and the only debuff utility super is Deadfall. Silk Strike has never been great in my opinion, and with Golden Gun being available, I see pretty much no reason to take it unless you're running a very specific build that requires it. Silence and Squall might actually surprise me since it's receiving a buff alongside the stasis changes, I think overall it's a mid-tier super, and its main use will be high crowd control for certain encounters and activities where a DPS super is not needed. Finally, Storm's Edge is flashy, but definitely just a PvP super. In PvE, it appears to not have much ad clear potential, nor does it appear to have much DPS potential either. The other dead weight comes in our aspects. We have some weird grenade options given the Hunter, but it's not necessarily bad, so I'm fine with the choices there, not too much to talk about. For Aspects, however, we have two problems. Starting with Gunpowder Gamble, it's niche and provides a lot less utility than other Solar Aspects unless running a highly specific build. Knock em Down would have had much more synergy with the rest of the Prismatic Kit, so I'm kind of disappointed that a single purpose aspect instead was chosen. People do enjoy Gunpowder Gamble, but to me it feels like it's a black sheep when compared with the other included aspects. Ascension is our other problematic aspect. Now, I don't want to be too harsh, but from what I've seen, it's going to be kind of like Tempest Strike. 
a unique ability, but ultimately one that doesn't provide enough utility to make it a compelling choice. If there is Eager Edge skating potential with it, that would change a lot, but just rising into the air to apply Jolt doesn't seem worth it. PvP is somewhere that's going to be a wild landscape for a while. I don't know how much is going to be absolutely broken in PvP for Hunters, but there are a few standout options. Storm's Edge, instead of being bad in PvE, is going to be an incredible super in PvP, allowing you to teleport to enemies for an immediate kill. It's going to be hard to react to, and with multiple charges, Hunter players can probably wipe a good amount of the enemy team before they even get a chance to react. Dusk Field Grenades and Grapple are great for locking down chokes and playing aggressively, respectively. Winter Shroud and Threaded Spectre are probably going to be the go-to aspects here. Ascension is going to lock you in an upwards animation, which is bad two times over due to being both in the air unable to avoid enemy fire, and being locked in an animation preventing you from doing literally anything for a short period. Gunpowder Gamble has never seen widespread use in the Crucible, and Stylish Executioner is primarily a PvE aspect. Prismatic Warlocks have some really interesting tools available to them. Just like Hunter, I'm going to go over two possible build paths that might help give a nice comprehensive preview for the subclass. The top Warlock build, in my opinion, is going to be what I'm going to refer to as the Lich build. You'll be afflicting enemies with any number of subclass debuffs and effects, then siphoning their life to heal yourself. The major aspects for this are going to be Feed the Void, which can now activate Devour on any subclass debuff, and Bleak Watcher. You can also opt for Heal In over Bleak Watcher if you'd rather build in the Solar Effects instead of Stasis. You could take pretty much any ability, but I would lean towards any that apply subclass debuffs like Scorch or Slow. Something that might be interesting to pair with this build is the new exotic, My Tyodoxia, if I'm even saying that right, since a spend will also trigger Feed the Void, while also giving you 3 melee charges. This build is all about applying debuffs to heal yourself, and with the amount of ability regen provided by Feed the Void, you should have a pretty high uptime on abilities to continue to feed into this gameplay loop. Your exotic class item also has some great perks that could really benefit this build. Spirit of Inmost Light will greatly improve your ability uptime, Spirit of Verity will empower your grenade damage, Necrotic synergizes nicely with your Arcane Needle, and even Spirit of the Claw could help give you more ability charges. Maybe you don't want to be a healer, maybe you want to be the summoner you always wanted to be. Strand promised it, but you never really got it. On Prismatic, Warlock has so many minion options, you'll flood the entire battlefield with summons. Helion, Bleak Watcher, Threadlings, and even Arc Souls can all be used at the same time. Sadly, Void Souls are not here, but I think with the four we have access to, you can make it work. Arc Souls are special in that they require the use of Getaway Artist, since the actual Arc Soul aspect is also not available on Prismatic. Oh, and with the new Speaker's Mask exotic, you can also have another type of summon, a healing turret if you want to provide a little extra healing to yourself and allies. Again, our class item has some great perks that could possibly benefit this build. Spirit of Inmost Light, Ferity, Starfire, Osmiomancy, and Swarm can all provide something special for this kind of summoner build, mostly improving grenade recharge in some way. Also, something to note on Prismatic Warlock is the ability to combine Arcane Needle with Lightning Surge. This way, you'll get a whopping 3 charges of Lightning Surge. My Felwinter's Helm Arc Warlock build might just get a little extra something if used on Prismatic because of it, so I'm going to be trying that out when I get my hands on Prismatic Warlock for sure. Prismatic Warlock also has access to a good selection of supers. Song of Flame is the new solar super, acting as a kind of mobile well of radiance. We don't know much about the super yet, but it's going to probably be a great option as a support-oriented super for team-based activities. Nova Bomb and Needle Storm are two solid DPS supers, with Needle Storm edging out Nova Bomb in total damage. Storm Trance and Winter's Wrath are probably going to go mostly unused, although maybe in certain activities like Onslaught they could see some use, although I know Onslaught is going away for a little bit. Finally, unlike Prismatic Hunter, there isn't a ton of dead weight here. Pretty much every ability and aspect has good intrinsic synergies with each other, or are otherwise strong on their own. Storm Trance may be a bit dead, but either Arc Super that could have been selected was kind of mid anyway, so I don't really care. Winter's Wrath is the only Stasis Super, so I'm not going to hold that against them. In PvP, I think Prismatic Warlock is going to take the annoying Threadling meta and make it worse. With so many types of deployable abilities, Warlocks are going to have their presence everywhere on the map, even without having line of sight. Threadling Grenades, Helion, Bleak Watchers, Cold Snap Grenades, all of these are going to be hard to avoid, and are even harder to deal with. Oh, and Warlocks are also the only Prismatic class to gain access to healing grenades, so that's a bit of an advantage. 
And of course, having multiple charges of Lightning Surge is going to be absolutely crazy in the Crucible, since the ability is already strong with only a single charge. Next up, we have Titans. Prismatic Titan has a lot in their kit. I think Titans have the lowest barrier to entry in terms of ability synergies, with a high number of them interacting with barricades or melees. Let's stick with the theme of going over two possible build paths and see how Prismatic Titan is going to stack up. The first one I'm going to talk about is the highly aggressive version of Prismatic Titan. There is so much potential for quick damage output here that it's kind of insane. At the top of the list is the Frenzied Blade Consecration combo. This will give you a whopping three charges of Consecration, just like on Warlock with Lightning Surge. Maybe you'd prefer a larger AoE instead of multiple charges. In this case, you could take Thunderclap. Regardless of your melee, Diamond Lance is actually a pretty viable option now. You can make lances with any ability kill now, not just stasis, so you could cast one of your AoE melee abilities to quickly clear an area, then pick up a Diamond Lance to pick off the leftovers. Since this combo is heavily based on your melee, taking the newly updated knockout aspect will be huge for you. Melee kills will instantly heal you, and your powered melee damage will be doubled as well. So not only are you clearing huge groups of enemies, but you're keeping yourself alive extremely easily too. The exotic class item also gives some even bigger gains for this kind of build. Spirit of the Assassin gives you invisibility on melee kills, and Severance and Contact create explosions on melee kills. Our second type of build is more defensive and relies on your barricade ability. Drenger Slash is an obvious choice, giving Titans the easiest access to suspend out of any of the three classes. You could also choose to use either Horfrost Z or the Spirit of Horfrost to transform your barricade into a set of stasis crystals. This could give a little bit more killing power on top of the suspension, and a little bit of slow as well. Or you could take Kepri's Horn for a similar type of killing power. Diamond Lance can be one of your aspects if you plan on using your barricade more offensively, or you could opt for Unbreakable to add additional defensive capabilities to yourself while not behind a barricade. The new Titan Exotic, Hazardous Propulsion, is a clear choice for a barricade build. You summon a number of Exodus rockets when casting your barricade that deal huge damage to targets, and after using your barricade, you'll also gain a buff to rocket weapon damage, which is crazy. Finally, your class Exotic can also roll with Spirit of Inmost Light, Scars, Horn, Abeyant, and Alpha Loopy to help benefit this build. Titans, just like Warlock, have a pretty good selection of abilities overall. For our supers, we have the most offensive selection out of the three subclasses. In fact, there isn't a single non-offensive super here. Thundercrash or Twilight Arsenal is going to be your go-to DPS super. Now, I would have said that we haven't seen Twilight Arsenal in action yet, but a bunch of YouTubers recently released videos with pre-release footage where they happen to use it. It looks to be a solid DPS choice, or alternatively, as a hybrid roaming super. Blade Fury is always pretty good and could also top damage charts in the right circumstance. Hammer of Soul and Glacial Quake are going to be the roaming supers for Prismatic and are good at what they do, but I don't think players are going to be picking either of these over Blade Fury, but they aren't awful depending on what your build is. Prismatic Titan also has some really great melee and grenade options. Shackle Grenade is the standout, again letting Prismatic Titan build heavily into Suspend when combined with Drenger's Lash. Maybe the only not amazing ability is Suppressor Grenades, since the other options available are much, much better, but it can be useful in a pinch. I'm not sure how I feel about Prismatic Titan in the Crucible though. It has some amazing tools like Shackle Grenades and Thunder Crash, but there really isn't too much over the top here. Depending on how strong Unbreakable is, we might have a meta of Titans running around absorbing every attack shot at them. Drenger's Lash could get some cheeky suspends, but it's not the most consistent ability. Knockout, I think, is the strongest PvP aspect, since you could do what Titans do best and punch someone to death for healing. Overall, I think Prismatic Titan is going to be a kind of mid subclass in PvP, since the kit mostly revolves around PvE crowd control and AoE ad clear. There isn't much here that could easily lock down chokes or quickly pick up kills on players, and I think that covers it for each individual class. In the previous videos in the series, I gave my recommendations here and my overall rating. I'm going to do the same thing here, but Definitely keep in mind that everything is still up in the air, and we don't know how exactly everything is going to perform when we finally get our hands on Prismatic next Tuesday. Alright, Hunters! You probably have the most dead weight out of the classes, but that doesn't mean you're out of luck. Hunter might have access to some of the most interesting combinations out of the three, mostly giving you access to the most powerful versions of builds already in the game. I want to recommend the Threaded Spectre build with Balance of Power, but I have no idea if that's actually going to work. 
So instead, I'm going to recommend the souped up Arc Strider build. Take Stylish Executioner, take Spirit of Caliban, take Winter Shroud, and blow everything up. If you're a fan of Arc Strider, Prismatic Hunter should feel right at home for you. Plus, in PvP, you have the best kit. With the most tools to play aggressively while also locking down areas of the map, you'll be terrorizing the Crucible in no time. Warlocks have the most potential for keeping themselves alive indefinitely. Apply tons of different debuffs to your enemies, then kill them to proc feed the void and devour. This is going to be my recommendation, since sustain is probably the most valuable thing in PvE. And because you'll be applying a lot of AoE debuffs to give yourself that sustain, you have the double whammy of killing everything while not dying. Titans have a lot of powerful tools that make them highly aggressive, ability spamming machines. The barricade build is cool, but I think taking advantage of knockout and your AoE melee abilities like Thunderclap or Consecration will provide you with the most value. Like Warlock, you will be killing everything, while providing yourself with a ton of healing at the same time. And honestly, Titans with access to Spirit of the Assassin scares me a little. You guys really won't be able to die, for sure. If I were to give a rating prediction for how I think Prismatic will perform overall in Destiny 2, I would give it an A. I think there is a lot to unpack with this subclass, especially with future updates and synergies that we haven't seen yet. It looks to have a good amount of tools for offense, defense, crowd control, and damage. I think it falls behind something like Solar in terms of raw survivability, or Strand, especially on Titan, for offensive capabilities. But Bungie did say that this was an advanced subclass, so there are definitely things that the Collective Destiny community and myself have not realized about Prismatic yet. Above all else, I'm just excited to get my hands on the subclass and start really testing out all the new things that we're getting with it. But what do you think? Is Prismatic going to absolutely break the game? Are you going to stick with mono subclasses or will you go all in with Prismatic? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below or over in my Discord server linked in the description. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave a like. The Final Shape is going to have a lot of things to talk about and you won't want to miss any of it. I'll be live for a lot of the week following the release on Tuesday and for the Day 1 Raid on Friday, so definitely stop by and say hi. But I think that's all I've got for now. As always, I've been Rizeki, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.